can't beat a morning view like this. fellow travelers welcome back to the adventures of a traveling dawn my name is benjamin o and this is the continuation of my holiday through europe we are here in waterford ireland the oldest city in ireland started in 1914 by the vikings themselves and we're going to go explore this uh, town so come on and enjoy the fun So Waterford is here along the river Sewer, Sewer. I think I got that right. Anyway, uh, this is where, like I said, the Vikings initially, uh, that where they first landed and they start settling a city here. And it's kind of perfect because it's not too far from the uh, the ocean. Uh, it's far enough inland. Um, and then, of course, uh, if you take the uh, the river, the river goes quite a ways into uh, into the uh, main part of Southern Ireland. I think all the way down to like Cork, I believe, as well. Uh, but it was a great spot uh, that you first get in. Nice settled area. You got the hills that are kind of like natural defenses on one side. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you can raid up and down the river from here um, or access the coast as well. So, But it's, it's got a great history. And like I said, 19, or 914 AD was when it was initially founded by the Vikings. And it's uh, the oldest Irish city still standing. So kind of cool. This is Reginald's Tower behind me, and uh, this was the first building in Waterford, uh, big, basically in the early 900 AD, uh, 914 AD, I believe. And it's named after the founder of the city, which is a Viking name. They call him Reginald. Uh, they think his actual name was Ragnall. Uh, but anyway, it's actually, it's a, it's a nice tower. Uh, you can generally usually go inside. It's about five euros to get in. Unfortunately, they're doing renovations on the time that we're here. But it's still kind of nice to be outside of it and to see uh, some great history. Because this is well over a thousand years old, uh, which is really, really cool. And it's nice because it has a, uh, a nice little thing of the Viking Triangle, which is really cool. It gives you a sense of what the city was at that particular time and what it is still now and where you can see all the Viking stuff around Waterford, which is, of course, a huge part of the history here. So it's actually really cool. It's got a nice little restaurant next to it as well. And of course, this uh, this cool um, model Viking boat behind me as well. <laughs> here this beautiful uh, wood carving is, of a sword is the uh, dragon tails or the dragon tail sword of Waterford and it's kind of cool because it has like it's this beautiful wood carving sword that starts at the beginning with the with the base there as that's kind of like the comet uh, that they believe you know, Viking mythology dragons uh, comets were fireballs from dragons um, crossing the sky and but it's cool it, it actually shows the history of waterford where it's like the original in the 700s when the original norsemen in, uh, first started invading ireland and then it just kind of goes down like history of I ireland or at least the waterford area of ireland itself you know, right here would be the first foundation of um uh, settlements uh that not waterford itself but settlements that the Vikings made for their longships. Uh, of course, the history of the monks and priests here, and then of course the settlements of Waterford itself being made here in uh, 914 by Reginald. And then the other side goes into like the the history of the t um, the the 10,000s and the 1100s and stuff like that. But it's actually really really cool. It's a beautiful wood carving. Uh, that goes depth into history of Waterford through its own artistry and whatnot. So, really cool.
great place to come to when you're here in Waterford is, of course, the House of Waterford Crystal and the Waterford Crystal Museum. It is a fantastic place that is, of course, where they make Waterford Crystal, which is known very much around the world. And when you take the tour, it's about a 45 minute tour, and they go through the entire kind of process of what it takes to make Waterford Crystal, including how long it takes, not just with making the crystal itself, but the people that do it, uh, they're, 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 they have to master it for like 10 years. It's like eight to 10 years of schooling, of apprenticeship, to become a cutter or to become a uh, glass blower, things like that. It is an absolutely phenomenal, fantastic tour. And you get to see the work, inner workings of the factory. Uh, you get to see them carving, you get to see them doing the glass blowing, the melting, um, all the different cutting and stuff like that. It is absolutely amazing. And of course, at the ends, there's the gift shop for the Waterford Crystal area, which has just an array of crystal objects in there that you can buy, which of course is very expensive. Uh, but it is absolutely phenomenal. So definitely whenever you're in Waterford, take the time and come to the Waterford Crystal Museum. It is worth it. And I think it was about $16, 16 euros, something like that. So rather inexpensive for a hour long ish tour. So absolutely fantastic. And it is absolutely amazing. Crystal Museum, we have come over to Bishop's Palace for a little bit of uh, fuel uh, for the stomach here. Uh, to start off, I've got what we call, uh, what they call beacon batches. Uh, it's actually a honey liqueur, about 5%. Looks really good. I got the elderflower and lemon one. And it comes with uh, a little bit of a orange to go in there. Ooh, that's actually really good. That's an interesting taste. Like you do have the honey on the back end, but this you do actually do taste. Uh, you get that acidity from the lemon, and then the elderflower in there is actually really nice as well. Very floral. I wasn't expecting that, <laughs> but it was like really good. I was expecting almost set honey liqueur. I'm thinking mead, but this is definitely not mead. It's a nice little sparkling. This would actually be great for summertime. Mm. That's good. All right, so for lunch, I got this delicious uh, holomi and avocado toasty, uh, which I believe it has a sriracha and honey um, dressing on it as well. So looks really good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I love holomi cheese because it's almost kind of meaty for a cheese. Nice crispiness on it. Um, the avocado. Uh, I think it actually has mint in it. So it's like minty avocado, a little bit of spice from the sriracha uh, in there. That's yeah. it. Oh my goodness. That is delicious. Do yeah, you ever come to Bishop Palace? Try the, particularly if you're vegetarian, because it's purely vegetarian. Which one did you get? Try the grilled hello me and avocado toasty. Really good. It comes with sweet potato fries as well, so the healthiest of fries. Do you have to give name All right, so that was absolutely fantastic lunch, and now we are on our way to the Medieval Museum of Waterford. So I'm here in the Medieval Museum here in Waterford, and it's a fascinating place. They've got about two different galleries. When you walk in, they start the tour. It's a guided tour. Uh, you actually go into an area that the museum is built around, and that is a castle, or a piece of uh, kind of like the castle that used to be in this area. And you just kind of go down into the cellar area, which is really cool. You learn a lot about the wine trade. It was one of the things you realize is, Waterford and its history used to be a very, very rich city. 
because not only did it have the Viking trade at one point in time, but even when the Normans took over, uh, the, the Normans brought in wine. And this was the one area in Ireland that uh, Irish were allowed to uh, bring wine in under the kings, under the Norman kings of England, which is a really cool, fascinating uh, part of that history. And that all stopped uh, during King John's reign. Um, you know, if you uh, read the Robin Hood tales, that King John, the first, but uh, or King, first, okay, I think it's King John the first. Anyway. It's really kind of cool. It has all these models uh, from different time periods of Waterford from the 1100s to the 12th century to the 15th century, what it looked like at the time, and a lot of great information about the, the expansion of it through the 12th, through the, like the, the 16th, 17th, and even 18th centuries, and the history of Waterford during that time is absolutely fascinating. You've got a lot of good relics here that are, you know, it's the only place in the world you can find them, including uh, certain papal vestments that uh, bishops used to wear uh, back in the day. Because of course, Ireland has gone through with um, being conquered by England for a long time. It has gone through periods of being both Catholic and Protestant. So it is a very, very fascinating fascinating place and I highly recommend it if you're doing a tour you can actually get like a nice ticket that goes through like all the different museums uh, but uh, we're definitely doing the medieval museum right now so but anyway hope you guys enjoyed that part and onward to the next area Vintage, or the, at the parlor vintage tea room. It's a great place to come from what I've uh, seen online. And it's it's basically, they do high noon tea uh, that you get you can get food, snacks, stuff. Uh, they got a bar, of course. But if you're here for just the tea, which is what we are, it's a great spot. They have just a bunch of different styles. Loose leaf teas, black teas, of course, Irish breakfast, things like that. Um, I got myself uh, the uh, Chinese gunpowder green tea myself, which is, and I love the, the cupware that they use here, which is really, really fantastic. And what's cool is I talked to the owners and they said they took this place over about six years ago and it's just, like they have like these all these antiques all over the place and it's decorated phenomenally. It's like such a cute little joint. So, well, let's go ahead and give this green tea a try. Cheers. very earthy that just goes down really nicely so mm. great 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 way to uh, spend the spend a chilly day inside okay so that was such an awesome place and great tea uh, but we're uh, on our way back. We're going to go do some shopping. We're actually going to have dinner at the house tonight. Uh, so I will see you guys in the morning when we go to Kilkenny. So I'll see you guys in the morning. And good morning, guys. All right. So second part of this video, uh, we just did Wofford yesterday. And the second part is going to be here in the beautiful town of Kilkenny. It is a medieval city, a large town here in Ireland, uh, north of Waterford, about about an hour. Uh, but it is really fantastic. It's, it was founded, I think, initially in 1172 by the Normans. Uh, the castle behind me is the majestic medieval castle, uh, Kilkenny Castle, that was finally built in 1195 uh, by, I believe, Charles Strongbow or something like that. But uh, it's absolutely fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and give you a tour of Kilkenny Castle, the grounds around. It's re situated right off the River Nor, so you have beautiful um, views of the river as well as you walk through town. And then, of course, we're going to go through town and have some uh, some food as well. So, but anyway, join us on the second part of the trip. Let's go.
So what do you think, James? About? Kilkenny. Kilkenny, it's very beautiful. The structures are still standing, which is, and, and it's, uh, the fact that it's still standing and the detail that is still present in it after what, 900 years-ish? Strong stuff, strong stuff. Kilkenny Castle Grounds and the park is well over a hundred, if not a couple hundred acres. It's absolutely huge. I mean, the castle itself was amazing, as you saw, um, but the grounds are kind of like, this is my vibe. I love being outdoors out here, and I love these, just, you know, right now it's perfect, like, fall colors are hitting uh, Ireland, but uh, absolutely gorgeous. You can spend, like, a whole day out at this park and, you know, bring a little picnic or something like that, and you'll be fine. You will be fine. So, yeah. But I hope you guys enjoy the grounds. I'll take it out to the river. <laughs> no, you're supposed to lean against the thing, Basically. look pensively off into the distance. Oh, oh there we goodness. go. Deep thoughts. Deep thoughts. So deep. Bloody. There. What a bunch of goobers. What do you think about Kill Kenny, bro? Hurt. Go! Oh. He's off! He's running! Scared of interviews. That's why he's the photographer. He's not a diva actor like I am. So, just done with the castle and the garden, or the grounds, and now we're off to get some food. We need some more fuel. I'm getting hungry. James is getting hungry. Dad is getting hungry. We're all getting hungry. Okay. So, onwards to Arroy Asian uh, fusion restaurant. just came out uh, but it's a really really cute kind of uh, Asian fusion restaurant the last before COVID happened 2017 through 19 they had like best uh, Asian fusion restaurant in Ireland or best uh, Asian fusion chef things like that they were award-winning so really really nice um, but we got the uh, first two items are the edamame so traditional edamame which is a little Irish sea salt and pepper mm. nice fresh good edamame and then we have, of course, the uh, calamari here as well, with a little bit of, um, what's the sauce on this? A little tamarind, I think? Tanju sauce. sauce, yeah. But it's a Thai, um, Thai spicy uh, calamari, so let's try this. Mmm. That is so good. Okay. <laughs> Mm. That is very good. Just tender enough, really nice, nice crispy um, outside to it. And that's got a nice like, lingering um, spice to it. That's really, really good. So, mm. Good appetizer. It's good first round. All right, so my drink that I just got here is the Simply Wildflower, uh, Wild Elderflower Collins. 
and it's got dingle gin. Generally comes with Gordon's, but I asked for the dingle. I wanted to try the Irish gin, so. Ooh, that's nice. That's really nice. Yeah, that's got um, dingle gin with a little bit of like elderflower liqueur, lemon juice. You got like nice so little acidity to that, and some uh, just some simple simple syrup with uh, some fever tree uh, elderflower tonic, which I love the elderflower, uh, and I love fever tree tonic. One of the best tonics. It's really good. All right, so my meal has arrived, and I got the spicy chicken kimchi ramen. This looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's got spicy chicken, kimchi, spring onions, carrots. Uh, it's got um, a hard boiled egg in there. So, of course, whenever you get ramen, you gotta try first the broth just by itself. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Nice little back spice on that. Now, let's just definitely get a. Is it, excuse me while I'm eating ramen with a uh, spoon and a fork. I'm not very Asian right now. My apologies. Mm. Mm. That chicken is so tender. Noodles are great. The saw or the, the the ramen broth is phenomenal. Uh, a little bit of getting little pieces of kimchi in there. Mm. Got just a lovely spice going down. And it's perfect for a day like this. Walking around the castle and on the grounds where it's just slightly rainy, a little cold. Phenomenal. Excuse me while I eat this. Okay, so after that delicious lunch, we're now here at the John Roth house. Uh, it's a uh, medieval house, it's 16th century, late 16th century was when it was built. It's a beautiful uh, house that's got uh, it's three different areas to it with the shops in front. He was, John Roth was a merchant and former mayor of uh, Kilkenny, but it's a gorgeous place. We're gonna go check out the gardens and the houses. Also, something that's really cool around Kilkenny, these, uh, these cats here. James, explain to me what this whole cat thing is. Uh, so the cats right now, it's called a catwalk. Um, basically, it's just for up until April, they have all these different artists that basically do their own rendition of the cat named Pangerban, which is a basically the mascot of Cartoon Saloon, a very predominant Irish animation studio. So pretty cool. Uh, they have it till April. So bring the kids, do the April. It's, it's kind of like a whole kind of like scavenger hunt for the cats all around the city. 21 of them. 21 cats. gardens that are the Roth gardens and uh, they uh, they built this or they kind of constructed uh, the whole garden area after they built the house because they wanted a place where it was very pleasing to the eye they of course could have their own vegetables their own fruits it's kind of cool it's like it's still a functioning growing garden they still have fruit trees they still have uh, vegetables that they grow herbs all that kind of stuff which does, goes to support the local area but it is an absolutely beautiful small little garden. It's just one huge rectangle that goes from the house all the way back to the back wall. Um, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And what's really cool is in the middle of it there is a uh, there's a an old well, and it's the last standing piece 
of the old uh, monastery that used to be here that the Roth house basically was built over. Uh, and so that, that particular well was an extra 400 years older than the Roth house, which makes it about an 800 year old well. And the last uh, part of the, the, the monk monastery that was here at the time, which is absolutely fantastic. I love the history of this area. It's a nice little kind of thing. Also, when you come to the Roth house, the Roth house is a private uh, museum. So you do have to pay, it's about eight euros to get in. Now most uh, of Irish or of Ireland's uh, national museums are free, that's paid by the tax dollars, but the Roth House you do have to pay for. And the fundings go of course to keep upkeep the preserve, preservation of the Roth House uh, Institute and whatnot. So, but it's a really, really cool spot. <music> So behind me is the Cathedral Church of St. Uh, uh, Canis, Canis, Sanis, something like that. Uh, but anyway, it is an old, uh, the area around here, the initial church, uh, goes back all the way to 1120. I think this kind of Gothic cathedral style is about the 13th or 14th century was when it was finished. Um, but And the, the full of it as you see is about 1600 was when the entire thing was really completed. What's really cool is it's one of the most well-preserved cathedrals in all of Ireland. Uh, and it does have a lot of great history around it because not only do you have the church that spans several, you know, centuries, it has outer buildings around, you have the cemetery, this ancient cemetery. Of course, we have a cat. We found well, that's one of the 21 cats. They did put it here as well which has nothing to do with the history whatsoever, but it's kind of a fun um, little scavenger hunt for kids. And then of course there's this huge round tower that was built uh, in the 900s for the Vikings. And that goes back to uh, even earlier. I think there was like a small little monastery that actually went back even further than the 12th century, back to like the eighth century and whatnot. So, but it's a beautiful, beautiful church. Unfortunately, it looks like we either got here too late or they were just closed today. So it looks like it is closed, but we're gonna just gonna go around and see the majestic side outside of the building. So I hope you guys enjoy. <music> guys so that is the last bit of this video of Waterford and uh, Kilkenny Ireland uh, I hope you enjoyed this kind of like first real true tour of the Irish towns and cities uh, I am heading back actually I gotta catch up with my family real quick they're well ahead of me but uh, we're heading down to Waterford for some dinner but uh, this is gonna be the end of the video. So thank you for joining me on this uh, first big kind of part of uh, Ireland. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, stay tuned for some more of my holiday adventures here in Europe uh, coming up. And if you guys uh, haven't already, make sure you hit that uh, subscribe button for much more videos coming soon. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. And here I've captured the elusive traveling dawn. So, ladies and gentlemen, this appears to be the end of the traveling dawn. It's been a fun ride. It's been too short. But uh, I'll see you in the next life. Goodbye. All right, welcome to the Adventures of a Traveling Dawn. I'm your host, Mike Lowe. Hey. <laughs>